Before we start learning about how we can test the security of networks, I would like to talk to you about the setup that we're gonna need to use in order to do this. So we're gonna need to use a number of tools and programs that run on Linux systems. You can install these tools manually if you want on any Linux operating system, or you can uh, install an, uh, a Linux distribution called Kali. Kali Linux is a distribution that it's based on Debian, and it contains most of the tools that we're gonna need to use. It also has all these tools pre-installed and correctly configured and ready to be used. Uh, you can install Kali Linux as a main machine, uh, so you can dial boot it with Windows or Linux or Mac OS or whatever you have uh, as a main machine and you select between the uh, operating systems at boot or you can install it as a virtual machine. Uh, install, uh, I'm going to be installing it as a virtual machine and I'm going to be using it as a virtual machine. I'd like to note that installing Kali Linux as a virtual machine doesn't make it any less useful than a main machine. You'll have all the tools, all the functionality of a main machine. Uh, the only downside to it is that you will not be able to access your internal wireless card. Uh, you're gonna need to use an external USB card. Now this is not a big deal because um, external cards are cheap and they're also uh, the internal cards are not very well supported and they're usually not good for penetration testing. They don't allow for packet injection and some of them don't even allow for monitor mode. Now I haven't explained what monitor mode and packet injection is, but I will explain them once we get to them. So, uh, you can install it as a virtual machine. Uh, basically installing it as a virtual machine means you will install it, you'll be using it inside your current operating system. So if you're using Windows, or if you're using Mac, or if you're using Linux, you can use a virtualization program like uh, VMware or uh, VirtualBox and you'll basically have a fully functional operating system inside your main operating system. We'll see how that works. It's very simple. It's not as complicated as it sounds. So there's two programs that allow us to install Kali Linux as a virtual machine. Um, there you have VirtualBox and you have VM VMware. Uh, personally, I prefer VMware, but they both work well and they both give you the same functionality. Uh, if you choose to go with VMware, then you, you don't actually need to install anything. You can just download a pre-installed version of Kali Linux using uh, this link. I'll also put it in the uh, resources on Udemy. So basically, you'll just download that file, install VMware, install that uh, download that file, and double-click the file. And that's it. You have Kali Linux installed and ready to use. The only difference is these files, the pre-installed versions, uh, usually come out after the release, after a week or maybe days, depending on when they want to make them and release them. Uh, or uh, the other option is you just download the ISO image. Uh, so ISO is basically just a bootable image. You can burn it on a CD or you can just put it on a USB stick and boot from it. Or you can just uh, keep it on your hard, dri hard drive and boot from it. And once we boot from it, we're gonna just do a normal install on Kali Linux. Uh, we'll go through the steps and see how we can install it. Now, with this process of installing from the ISO image, you can use it with VirtualBox, you can use it with VMware, or when you want to install it as a main machine. The only difference is that when you're uh, when you're doing it as a as a main machine, you want to be careful not to override. Uh, your other operating system if you're safe for example if you have windows and you want to dial boot with windows then you want to make sure you don't overwrite windows when you install kali but what, what i'm going to be using what i recommend is installing it uh, as a virtual machine so installing it inside windows or inside linux for me i'm going to be installing it inside linux but it's the same so all you need to do is download vmware or virtualbox you download them from their official websites uh, VMware player you can download it for free as far as I know so you download it you install it uh, VirtualBox is free as well um, the installation process of VMware and VirtualBox is very simple so I'm not gonna explain it uh, both on Linux and Windows you literally just download your version and then just go next 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 install it and that's it installed then we're gonna download Kali Linux so to download Kali Linux you just go you just go to their uh, website kali.org downloads I'll show you here
and you download your flavor so if you're looking for 64 bits if your system is 64 or 32 you download the one that you want make sure it's the ISO um, you can download it as a torrent or as the ISO you click it it will start downloading I already have it downloaded so once you actually have it downloaded um, we're gonna see how we can install it using uh, virtual uh, using VMware it's the same process using VirtualBox just a different program and it's the same process as I said if you're installing it as a main machine just make sure you don't overwrite your own uh, operating system when you do it as a main machine using VirtualBox or VMware you will not be able to overwrite your uh, main operating system so it's risk free even if you mess up anything if you do anything incorrectly it will not have any effect on your main machine because basically VirtualBox or VMware they literally create a virtual computer so a virtual RAM virtual CPU virtual everything in order to allow you to run this virtual machine so now I'll show you how to install Kali Linux as a virtual machine uh, inside VMware I'm gonna be using the ISO image which I downloaded already from this link so download that install VMware or VirtualBox installation is simple as I said and the process of installing Kali Linux on either VMware or VirtualBox is the same it's also the same process if you want to install it with Windows as dial boot for example but uh, just make sure you don't overwrite the Windows files when you install it as dial boot but when you install as a virtual machine there is no way you can mess up your other installations because everything is going to be installed on virtual uh, physical on virtual hardware so you're going to have virtual RAM virtual hard drive her virtual everything which basically means if anything goes wrong within your virtual machine it will not affect your main machine so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, run VMware and now I'm going to go on create a new virtual machine here if you have the image burned on a CD you can select it from this option or you can use the use ISO image which is what we downloaded and I just have it here in downloads and you can see here it's Kali Linux so I'm gonna open that I'm gonna click on next now it already knew it's a Linux but it thought it's Ubuntu and I'm gonna change that to Debian because it's Kali Linux is built on Debian so you see here you have Debian 64 bits I'm gonna go next and then I'm gonna call it Kali 1.1.0 Hey. Now I'm gonna, that's just the name of the machine and I'm gonna click next. Now it's telling me how much uh, s the hard drive should be. So I, it's already put in it as 20 gigabytes and I think that's enough so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. So this is the virtual hard drive that it's going, uh, that's we're gonna use to install Kali Linux on. So I'll click next and then we can see here that's all the configurations that we chose I'm gonna modify this so I'm gonna customize and I'm gonna increase the amount of RAM to 1 gigabyte now you can increase this to whatever you want and um, you can also modify a few things here you can modify the networking um, you can modify the processors all the uh, resources that will be available to the virtual machine so I change that to 1 gigabyte here and you have the network as NAT I'm gonna leave it the way it is and I'm gonna click on finish and close that and now it's going to automatically boot uh, the new virtual machine that we made and it's gonna boot it from the ISO image that we picked now you can use the live AMD the live option basically just to boot into Kali but it's gonna give you a functional Kali operating system but a anything you do on that operating system it will be deleted the next time you boot the system so it's basically just to see what the operating system is like what tools are available on it so I'm gonna go down to the graphical install option and this will basically allow me to install Kali Linux on the virtual hard drive So it's asking me to select the language and I'm going to keep it as English. Then it's asking me about the country that I'm in and I'm going to change that to Ireland.
So it's asking me for the host name now. I'm just gonna keep it as Kali. I'm gonna go continue. And it's asking about the domain name now. I'm gonna keep that empty. And uh, now I'm gonna put my password. This is the root password. Basically, the root account is uh, the main administration account in Linux systems. So basically, this account has all privileges to do whatever you want on the system. So you might need to use this in the future. You will actually need to know this password. So make sure you remember it. So now it's asking me how do I want or where do I want to install Kali. If you're installing it as a main machine, uh, you'd want to go probably on manual and make sure that you don't overwrite your windows. Now because we're installing it as a virtual machine, the hard drive, we're going to use the entire disk which is the virtual hard drive that we created. So it's the 21 gigabytes that we selected at the start. I'm going to click continue. And we're gonna put all files in the same partition, that's no problem, continue. And it's just showing us now the configuration that we picked. I'm gonna say this is perfect. And here it's just asking us to confirm that this is what we want. Now it's installing Kali on my virtual hard drive. So I'm gonna pause the video now because there's no point of you just watching this Installing it's just gonna make the video longer and I'll resume when the installation is finished Okay, now it's asking me It's telling me that some of the packages that are going to be installed are available online So the, pa the packages are actually on the live CD or on the live ISO image But they're also uh, available online. So if you check the online mirrors then uh, you there might be newer versions of these packages so you can download uh, these newer versions but for now I'm actually gonna set it to no and I if I want to update then I'm just gonna update after I install the whole system now it's asking me if it should install grub on the main boot sector now grub is the bootloader that's used with Linux and it's asking me to do so because it didn't detect any other operating systems installed on my virtual machine. Now, if you if you're doing again, if you're doing this with Windows as a dial boot, then you should click no in here because that's not safe. But since we're installing it as a virtual machine, so it is going to be the only machine on this virtual machine or the only operating system on this virtual machine. I'm gonna keep it at yes, and I'm gonna click on continue. Okay, now it's telling me that the installation was successful, so I'm gonna click on continue and it's just gonna finish up and remove maybe some of the temporary files that were created. Okay, now it's actually booting up into my Kali Linux, the machine that we just installed. So now the installation is complete. And uh, as you can see that we successfully installed Kali Linux as a virtual machine inside my main machine which is Linux in this case but you can do the same with Windows or Mac OS or any other operating system. <laughs> now as you can see if we run VMware we can see we have a new virtual machine here called Kali and if I run that I'm gonna be able to run the virtual machine that we created in the previous videos we can use this virtual machine now to test the security of uh, networks. The only thing is that I want to point out a few things before I start talking about networks and how we test the security of them. Just so that everything is clear and uh, you won't have any questions about the setup that I'm using. So the first thing that I want to note to is uh, logging into the machine. We're just going to log in using the username root and the password that we created when we created the virtual machine. The second thing that I want to show you is that uh, how you connect your wireless card. 
as I said if you're using a virtual machine you will not be able to use your internal wireless card you're gonna have to use an external one that's not, not a problem because external cards are more powerful and usually internal cards are not very well supported to do injection or to use it in monitor mode I'll explain what these terms mean later but basically just external cards are, are more powerful than internal cards so to see the cards the wireless cards that are available uh, I'm gonna use the terminal and I'm gonna type a command iwconfig and as you can see that there are no wireless cards connected now I'm gonna connect my card through the USB I'm gonna give it a few seconds and then I'm gonna run iwconfig now as you can see I have an extra card here showing up, LAN0 that's the name of my external wireless card and that's how I'm gonna be using it so anytime I wanna use it I'm gonna use the name LAN0 now sometimes when you connect the wireless card it doesn't show up here even after you connect it so you'd wanna go to virtual machine you go to removable devices and then select your wireless card from here so here you can see it's that's the name of my wireless card and you should see connect now I see disconnect so when I click on that it's actually gonna disconnect my card and if I run iwconfig you'll see the card is gone now I'll just do it again if I go removable devices and I select my card and click on connect give it two seconds and run iwconfig and as you can see I have LAN0 installed another thing that I noticed with this installation this shouldn't happen but uh, my sources were wrong sources are actually the URLs that your package manager uses when you try to install new programs or new libraries so one of the sources was actually missing for some reason so I just want to show you how to fix it in case you get the same problem to see your source file your sources sorry you just type in leafpad etc apt sources.list and you can see that the security one is here but I don't have the main source there should be a main source here so to get that just go to the internet and google Kali sources I actually have it open here so I'm just gonna google it so you see it's the first you get the first result and you'll see that the sources should be these two so I actually have the second one I just need to get the first one and I'm gonna paste it here I'll save this and close the file and that's it once you do that do apt get update And that's it now it's updated uh, you can install anything you want and it should work the last thing that I want to show you is I'm a, when I do my course I'm not gonna be using this terminal window I'm gonna use a program called terminator basically it's exactly the same as this one but it allows you to have multiple windows within the same window so to install it you can just type in apt get install terminator and it's downloading it now and installing it and that's it so if I go on applications accessories and terminator is here so that's what I mean you can you can split the screen and you can have two screens and you run commands on them that's it now you're actually completely ready to start learning how to test the security of networks